Shuttle Yana and Shuttle Joe, could you please let me know when one of you is available? Thanks. Ice Tower Shuttle Joe. Well, the students, we've got uh, three undergrads from LSU joining us here. Woo! My hands! And we've got four graduate students and my colleague, Jonathan Tompkins, a co-PI on the proposal here. So we have a, a team of, of nine people. Woo! Yeah, lovely. How excited. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm excited to be on a warm ship because it's freezing out here right now. It's really windy and it's really cold, but it's great. Well, I'm going up to my room, um, just getting situated. It's really nice. You can come take a look. Okay. This is new. That's a uh, a nice bed. Most of the beds are single. Hello. <laughs> My closet is bigger than this. <laughs> Full bathroom and shower. It's uh, pretty small. Uh, the shower here's the shower. The water smells a little funny. Uh, it's really nice. This is it's a much nicer ship than uh, the first ship I sailed on, which was the the Polar Duke but I think we're allowed to throw up in the toilet. I don't know, I always get confused. They always say that you can do anything in the toilet. <laughs> They're like, don't put anything in the toilet. I think you can vomit in the toilet. <laughs> okay, that's curious. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lovely thing to keep that midnight sun out when we're trying to sleep. I've got a huge porthole, fantastic. Two beds, and the most amazingly of all, there's an ensuite bathroom. This is luxury. Absolute luxury. It's small, but it's comfy. It'll work. It'll VHS. <laughs> <laughs> Who uses that? But anywho, on a tape deck. <laughs> West Antarctic Ice Sheet is producing a return of that ice volume to the global ocean, which is causing a rise of the sea level. And what we're trying to do is add some more details into that retreat history to say exactly where it's been and when it's occupied those various locations. So we're collecting three different types of data. A seismic transect allows us to identify where the wedges of sediment were when the ice was expanded. We're also collecting um, multi-beam data, which gives us a detailed view of the seafloor. And the third piece of information we're trying to, to get here is uh, core. Cores are really important because the sediment in the cores contain tiny fossils uh, that fall out of the seawater. And these fossils can be dated. You can find out how old, how long ago it was since they were alive. And if you do that, you find out how long it's been since this was open water and how long it's been since the ice retreated. So this coring is really the only way we can get definitive dates about how long ago it was when the ice sheets extended all the way out here to the middle of the Ross Sea.
Well, the students we, we have on board, they're doing great. My feeling is that they're having a good time and seeing sorts of things that you wouldn't normally see, of course, not in Louisiana. What do you think, Vince? I think this is amazing. It's like a sleight of hand, this lack of sound. I could hear the whales blowing in the distance if they would grant me the pleasure of a show. But the sea is now glass as opposed to the blackness of the morning waters. It's not even cold, but rather cool here on the bow where the wind normally breaks my heart. All about us, the busted pieces of ice float with no other apparent reason but to move and to let us know that they exist. Like jagged jellyfish, mushroom tops, they're the only bodies I notice swaying, colonizing the frosty seas. But now I feel wind on my hands, and it whispers softly, hinting of the impending waves, only a trembling of the sea's power. It controls those encroaching clouds, casting shadows, like stretching fingers yearning to reach our vessel in the calm before the storm. But I see no storms on the horizon, and that's the story of our adventures. A curtain of mist skirts our starboard view, boxing us away from the north, while ice is giving us bulldog braddock rights, preventing a southern path, forcing us into the speckled icy waters ahead. A direct path is all I ask for my science. I've seen many ominous mornings this voyage, but today was foreshadowed by the red skies when I arrived at the bridge, nearly 105. The water is not reflective, showing mirrored iceberg halves on the surface. Rather, light bleeds through, giving ghostly blue-hued underwater images of the failed pitiful barricades before us. They're all beautiful. <laughs>